This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Let's start with the legend. According to the corporate mythology, in 1912, the iconic cosmetics impresario Elizabeth Arden handed out red lipstick to suffragettes as they marched down Manhattan's Fifth Avenue demanding the vote. They instantly took to the bold pop of color and added a bright lip to their look. Thus, freed from the constraints of its association with sex workers, fancy feminist ladies rebranded lipstick as a glamorous form of rebellion, making lip color essential for every woman. And the rest is beauty history. Except when it isn't. It's a great story, and it does have some threads of truth to it. Arden did march in at least one parade. But it's not the whole story of how we came to be one nation under gloss. However, the subject being American history, you have to start somewhere. And generally speaking, we like to start with one big event, the shot heard round the world. Now he belongs to the ages, a day that will live in infamy. Unfortunately, in addressing the question of lipstick and its place in American history, there's no one bright flash of inspiration. Instead, it's a long, winding chain of events personalities, and inventions intertwined with race, class, commerce, media, and gender that starts before America was even these United States. Indeed, before lipstick was even in stick form. Lipstick, or lip color, in the 1700s and 1800s would have been known as lip rouge, or just rouge, in its earliest all-purpose form, and wouldn't come in a stick shape until the late 19th century, and the metal tube that we're familiar with until 1917. It was available in two formulas, rouge in powder, just what it sounds like, or pomatum, or salve, which mixed a red dye with some sort of emollient. Thus the name rouge from the French word for red. The color was limited to the red family and derived from either vegetable dyes or, more commonly, carmine also known as cochineal, which is ground beetle shells. Using it was less about personal expression or following trends and more about trying to recreate or enhance the natural blush of youth. Use of color occurred, but probably sparingly for most American women due to the fact that the country was still something of a frontier, and there was little call for it in rural areas and workaday life. Little, but not none. For example, in 1766, the same year that the English Parliament passed the American Colonies Act, which formalized its full governmental sovereignty over the upstart backwater on the other side of the Atlantic, one Anne Pearson Milliner took out an advertisement in Benjamin Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette to offer the consumers of Philadelphia imported rouge and lip salve, in addition to other dainties. The fact that those toiletry items share a page with advertising for fine Liverpool beer, almanacs, with a lady's form of prayer for a husband, a horse race, and a $3 reward for the return of a runaway Negro wench, places cosmetics firmly in the swirl of timeless American interests. <laughs>